Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody over there at Viro. I thank you guys for this opportunity that you have given me to become a director in your community. You guys seem like what you're doing is great, and that's why I want to take part and hope to give you guys uh, some more viewers and hope that everybody likes my content. So with that, I hope you guys enjoy this video. And as the title suggests, I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction here in the beginning. But it also suggests that I'm going to be teaching you how to play an Arms Warrior, which is why I'm going to keep this introduction short, because there's a lot to play in an Arms Warrior, and this is in PvE, not PvP. So, as is obvious, I'm playing World of Warcraft. If you guys like World of Warcraft, you like Swifties videos, Mercator's videos, Elemental QT's videos, Trade Chats videos, any of those guys, you're going to like my content because I put out videos like them, but I am different in my own sense, and I do things my way, and I will never duplicate anybody's ideas, and I'm dedicated to you guys, and that is why if you are falling under the category of any of the above, enjoying their videos, or enjoying World of Warcraft, you're going to want to come and check out my channel and my videos and subscribe to me. And I can't say I appreciate it enough. So thank you guys for, for that in advance if you do go ahead and subscribe to me. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just say that the videos I put out, I put out PvP videos. Now, in these PvP videos, you won't see me and PvP gear because I feel like it's a little cheap. If you guys do it, it's totally acceptable. I'm not hating on you. I just feel like it's a challenge if I don't have it and it makes my videos more interesting. So with that, if I am in PvP gear, it means I'm on my Warlock, which is Exidium, or if I'm in BOA, it's the only time I will be in any of the above. He's my PvE character, but I do bring other characters such as Valox, my Arms Warrior, into PvP, just not in PvP gear, obviously. Now, here's a, I'm doing a little bit of a risk bringing you guys PvE video because a lot of people don't really watch PvE videos, or I don't think so, but I thought it'd be a great place to show you guys how to play an Arms Warrior in PvE because it's original content. I didn't look up. If, there's definitely ways how to play an Arms Warrior, but I'm going to show you guys my own way. So I'm going to apologize if you guys aren't an Arms Warrior, don't care about Arms Warriors. At this point in the video, you're probably going to want to go ahead and start watching something else. But Or if you're just interested or you like my commentaries, then keep watching. So on my action bars, I'm, I'm talking about the second action bar here, guys. The one with all the attacks, the ones, the twos, everything like that. There's my DPS for the first boss, by the way. It's hard to see. It's 25.9, I believe. Um, or 24.9, 25k. I like to set up my action bars in a priority standpoint. So my first attack is what you're going to want to start off your rotation with and so on. Now for my first attack, it's a Ren. So that's your bleed. You're going to want to apply that right away because it is a DOT and it's just going to bring more damage to you. As a DPS, the more damage you do, the more raid leader is going to want to recruit you into his raid group and then you can get a raiding spot and go ahead and raid Dragon Soul which is exciting oh, unless you don't like PvE then it's probably not the greatest so the second attack then is gonna be Colossus Smash it's gonna allow you to go through 100% of the enemy's armor increasing your damage again anything that increases your damage as DPS is great so anytime that is up along with Mortal Strike which is your main attack you wanna use both of those whenever they're off a of cooldown after that comes the overpower. Now, overpower you cannot use unless it does proc. So, the only way to really get it to proc is by attacking, and there's really no point in time. It's not like every three seconds or something that it, it procs, it's random. So, basically, just attack, and then when it comes up of being able to be used and it procs, then you want to use it. Now, when you start off your rotation, after you use your Mortal Strike, Overpower probably isn't going to be ready, so you skip it and you go to your slam. Now, slam is your filler. Use that about twice, unless overpower procs after your first one. And then by that time, Mortal Strike is usually off of cooldown, so you go back to that and just kind of keep bouncing between those two things until overpower procs. Once it procs, kind of just go through back over what I just told you. After that comes Heroic Strike. You guys, as an arms warrior, Please do not use Heroic Strike if you have under 65 or 60 Rage even. 60 is kind of a little short. But if you use it under that, it's, it consumes so much Rage that it wipes out all your Rage that you have. 
then allows you not to uh, be able to do damage, not tank. And when it cuts off your damage, it cuts down your DPS. Your runs are going to sit there and take your DPS down, really. So only use that when you have over 65 rage, please, or you're going to screw up your whole rotation. You might as well sit there until your battle shell comes off a of cooldown or her auto attack to get your rage back up. It's going to suck. Uh, then I have my execute. You can only use Execute when you, the enemy has under 20% health, I believe. And so when it is able to be used, though, you want to spam the heck out of it. And I associate Execute with Recklessness, which is on the other action bar. And I'll explain that in a little bit. So then you have your Bladestorm, which you saw me use a little bit earlier in this section, right before this boss, when we were clearing the mobs. It's an AoE, which I think, I don't know what... AOE stands for actually maybe attack on everything I don't know comment that in the description below but it AOEs everyone causing you to do a lot of damage and DPS which is good and I like to use that along with recklessness too so recklessness has such a long cooldown if you're about to go into a boss fight I wouldn't recommend it but if you are just clearing out mobs you got a while and there's a ton of people use your recklessness it's gonna allow you to do more damage to everyone then it's heroic leap you can start off your rotation either with an, in a heroic leap to jump into everybody, and that is what I recommend because it does damage to everybody, but you don't see me use it much because I'm not used to using it. You just get it at 85. I'm used to charging. And so if heroic leap isn't on off a of cooldown, you're going to want to use your charge, which is my next attack, the V on my action bar. And that just charges the enemy and gets you in range to use your melee attacks, which is what Arms Warriors are. After that is my trinket. This trinket increases my mastery. Our mastery is arms warriors. It makes us do 100% of another another normal attack. So basically, while you're attacking, it does the 100% of that normal damage. So you hit like two 30k's or two 5k's. It's not really a great stat, but it's it's one of our top stats as an arms warrior. Then you're gonna have your hamstring. Now hamstring I only use if the tank dies and the healer has aggro and he's taking damage. I like to slow him down and get aggro off of them because we are plate wearers and we can take some damage. Not much though because you shouldn't have dodge repair on your gear or you don't know what you're doing as a DPS. On the extra bar above that you're gonna have your battle shout. Battle shout increases our strength and agility which cause us to do more damage. Every time before a fight starts just pop that guys. After that, we have our Deadly Calm, which gives us a unlimited amount of rage for 10 seconds, so all of our attacks consume no rage. And you want to start off a boss fight with that usually, so you can spam, slam, or whatever you want to spam in a fight. Then is the Recklessness. Again, you're going to see me pop Recklessness in a second, but I like to rate, wait until Colossus Smash is off of cooldown, so I can use Colossus Smash, get through 100% of their armor, then pop that Recklessness to give us another 50% of critically striking the target. And then spam or execute. It's going to do a lot of damage. I'm doing 80k with a 377 item level in my executes, which is really nice. After that is uh, Inner Rage, I believe. That's basically just... It takes the... Shortens the cooldown on Heroic Strikes. I'm doing this off the top of my head, guys. Sorry. And so... I don't actually use it at all. You can use it if you wish. After that is Berserker Rage. The only time I pop this, it's more of a PvP thing, again, along with Hamstring. Only time I use this is if there is a crowd control, a CC, such as a Fear or a Sap. It allows you to get out of it, and you're immune to them. Um, I also use it to get my Enrage Regen, which is farther down on the bar, and I'll explain that. After Berserker Rage is the Intimidated Shout. It's an AoE Fear, so it's a really nice crowd control. We don't really have to use that in PvE, or I hope not. Use that if your tank dies and you are trying to get away, basically. Just fear everybody in every which way direction. After that, you got your pummel. Anytime if you have deadly boss mods and it tells you to interrupt, that's what you're going to be using. Or anytime somebody's casting a big attack, you're going to use it. You don't really need it much in PvE unless you're on interrupts and your group assigns you that job. And then you got your sweeping strikes. Anytime there's two or three enemies... You're going to want to use it because you're going to do the... If you're hitting 40Ks on one target, it's going to hit the other target for that 40K. It does damage to both targets. Really nice attack for DPS. After that, you got your Victory Rush. The only time you get that is after you kill someone. Use it when it procs. It's nice. You get some health back from it. Then you have your Enrage Regen, which if you're on low on health, you're going to want to use it. 
then you have your heroic strike which if the enemy gets far away from you and you're charged on cooldown whatever the case may be throw your weapon at him you got your retaliation if you pull some aggro it consumes the next 20 melee attacks from you and then you have your demoralizing shout causes all the enemies to do less damage if the tank dies again that's something you can use and then you got your rallying cry which gives everybody more health Another thing to use when the tank dies. It's really up to you guys. The other things don't matter. It's just my ratio. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you arms warriors out. And I hope Viro decides to upload this. And again, thanks for the opportunity. Come check out my channel. It is in the text media that you can see on the screen. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.